Hi, I'm Ashton, and today I'm bringing you another trans book review. Um, if you don't know what these are, I'm trans, I like reading books, and when I read books that are about being trans, I like to review them for my audience. That's you, you're the audience. I'm actually kind of warm, I'm gonna take this off. Today I'm reviewing a book that, as you can tell from the title, I really, really love. It is Yes, You Are Trans Enough by Mia Violet. This is the book. It's about 350 pages. Um, I read it in two days. When you really like a book, stuff like that happens. Per usual with books that I really like, I'm not going to spoil it in this review because I would recommend that you read it. When I really don't like a book, like Beyond Magenta, I'll spoil it, I don't care. But this one, I care a lot about. I care a lot about this book. So usually in trans book review videos, I structure them starting with the background, then I talk about things I like, then I talk about things I'm iffy on, and then I talk about things I didn't like. This is gonna be a bit different because I really liked almost everything in this book. I have one critique, so I'm gonna tell you that, then I'm going to get into all the things that I really enjoyed and the things that I thought made this book really good. Um, and before that, I'm going to start with a little bit of background. So, so Mia Violet is a UK-based uh, bisexual trans woman, and I've been following her on Twitter for probably two or three years now. So um, I was following her when this book was announced, and I was like, oh fuck, that looks good. Um, I bought it for myself a while ago, and I just got around to reading it in the past week when I was trying to finish up my 30 books for the year, which I did. Based on the Twitter presence that Mia Violet has, I thought I would like this book. Um, I was right. <laughs> I didn't really come in with many expectations outside of that. I know it's a little bit of her life story with a little bit of advice, and that's pretty much exactly what it is. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how she structures that when I get into what I liked. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the background. That's why I heard about this book, and that's why I wanted to read it. So I did read it. So the only thing, the only one thing that I am critiquing about this book is her use of the phrase, the trans community, implying that it is a singular community. And a lot of the times she is referring to the, the online trans community, but again, I don't think that's entirely accurate. Something that I've fallen into more, especially recently, is the idea that there is no one trans community, you know? And that applies to most, like, different types of groups. There's no one queer community. There's no one, like, punk community. Every different identity and every different subculture and every different thing that makes humans unique can form communities, but that doesn't always mean it's just one community. And I think representing trans communities as the trans community can kind of imply that we're more of a hive mind than we are. There's a lot of diversity even within trans people, and there are so many different communities of trans people that I'm not sure using the trans community as a singular is entirely accurate. So obviously that's not something that like deters me from loving this book. And I also think that's a nuance that has been discussed only a lot more recently. I've seen a couple different um, tweets and discussions about, you know, community versus communities recently. Um, and that's when I made up my mind about it. Like it's not something I'd thought of until a couple months ago, I think. So that's like a very modern critique, I feel like. And this was published back in 2018. Um, and I don't think that discussion had really started back then, but it is something that I think is good to be aware of when you're going into reading this book, that that when she talks about the trans community, she's talking about any trans community that she's a part of. She's not necessarily saying that trans people in general are one big community because there's so many different communities between trans people and with different groups of trans people and with different intersections of trans people. It's much more complicated than just the trans community. There are a lot of trans communities. Um, that's just something that I felt like I needed to clarify and discuss before I get into praising this book. With that singular critique done, I'm going to tell you why I love this book so much. Now, the first thing that I wrote down is this book would be perfect for people questioning their gender. That might be obvious from the title, but through reading it, it just becomes more and more obvious that like, if I had read this back when I was questioning my gender, I would have been like, fuck it, yep, perfect, great, I love it, thank you, Mia. So if you're in a place where you are questioning your gender, where you're not sure where your gender is, where you're deciding whether or not you want to transition medically, socially, whatever else, this is going to be a really, really helpful book for you. And that could be true of any book where a trans person tells their own story, but this book in particular kind of outlines the way that she discovered her trans identity and how she decided she wanted to transition. And she kind of purposefully gives guidance to the reader, which I really think is great. And 
I agree with pretty much everything she says. So aside from that very general purpose of the book, going into the more specific things that I really liked, um, two things that she addresses right off the bat that I thought are really good things to start your, you know, memoir slash advice book with. She addresses almost right away that language around trans people is constantly changing. You know, non-binary people went from using NB, the letters, to ENBY more frequently, and now people don't like ENBY, and, and I find a lot of people are gravitating towards just non-binary, the entire word. People don't use FTM or MTF as frequently as they used to. You know, transsexual has definitely fallen out of fashion. Language around trans people and our transitions and our lives changes frequently and over time, and I'm really glad that she addressed that because even when I read books that were published in like 2014 about trans people, I'm like, ooh, yikes didn't like that wording. Um, so I really like that she talked about that and said like, hey, things change. This isn't the way that we would have described it when I was a kid. And this may not be the way that we describe it in 20 years. And all of that is okay. Um, that was good. That was cool. And that's something that I really respect. And the other thing is that she stresses that she's white, abled, and dyadic. White privilege and non-disabled people's privilege is relatively frequently discussed. I find that dyadic privilege isn't as frequently discussed. So I thought it was good that she even mentioned it and she went into intersex issues a couple of times in the book, but I'm not gonna delve into that. I just wanna let you read it for yourself. In my eyes, it's very important that people who are marginalized in one setting acknowledge the privilege that they get out of other parts of their self. And that's a discussion that I have had with so many of my IRL queer friends. And it's something that is important to me and to a lot of other people. And I'm glad that she talked about that. I also think those two things are really important to lead any book about trans stuff with, especially if it is a memoir saying like, hey, this is just my experience. You know, um, not every book does that. And the way that she does it is very eloquently done and very good. So because this is a memoir, Mia starts off by talking about her childhood. Cool, fine, good. As someone who's delved into creative writing multiple times throughout my life, writing about your childhood accurately can be difficult. And that's also something that I've seen from a lot of authors. I've read a lot of books, okay? People writing about their childhood can sometimes be messy or convoluted. The way that Mia does it is amazing. She pieces together anecdotes that make her writing feel very linear and connected. And then she inserts life lessons or things that she wished she'd known along the way. So it like ties in advice with storytelling and it's just done really, really well. The way that she interlaces her trans experiences with lessons that she wish she'd learned and lessons that she wants to impart upon the reader and things that she wishes more cis people knew about trans people. Like, it's just done in such a lovely interlocking way. I just, I couldn't be happier with the way that this book is written. Her writing style itself isn't like particularly unique. You know, it's personable, it's friendly. It feels like you're talking to a friend who's just spilling their guts in a very vulnerable way and that's good. But the way that she constructs the story of her childhood by spinning together anecdotes in a way that seems honest, but not over-exaggerated, because we don't all remember a perfect timeline of our life, you know? Especially trans people, because so many of us have trauma attached to our childhoods. And she just does it in a very honest way. She's telling you what she remembers, and she's imparting wisdom along the way, and it's just chef's kiss. So because this is both a memoir and a book that teaches a few lessons, a lot of lessons actually, um, a lot of the lessons are things that I felt I already knew um, and I didn't need to be told, but I am someone who's pretty heavily involved within multiple different trans communities and queer communities and leftist communities too, which helps. So I already have like a pretty good knowledge bank about being trans, especially because I am trans. Um, but I feel like a lot of these lessons are things that cis people definitely need to learn, and even things that trans people need to learn. There are a lot of trans people, particularly white binary trans men, that have a lot to learn, and I feel like this could teach them some shit. Um, one example that I wrote down is on page 72. Again, I'm not like spoiling anything, I'm just gonna give you an example. Looking like your cis is certainly not the root of happiness and not the reason to transition. The reason to transition is to be yourself, to find happiness and the freedom to be open and honest. That can happen at any age and it's never too late. Um, that's part of a whole like other discussion of other things, but those few sentences really hit me hard and that was just one example of something that I wish more cis people knew and I wish more trans people knew. On top of really good life lessons about being trans, there are just some really good life lessons in general. Like not everything that she tells you is about being trans. It's also just a memoir. 
about her life. Like, if she wasn't trans, she'd still be a fucking fascinating person. And I think she'd still have a lot of wisdom. For example, she talks about a long-term relationship she was in where she learned that attaching your self-worth to another singular human being is oftentimes detrimental. But that is a lesson that I've learned from life experience, but reading it in this book and like knowing that she, her writing about that is going to also pass that message on to other people and probably help others is just so good. I think she speaks a lot of truth and definitely sends along some life lessons, not just trans related ones, but just like general good advice, good things to know. And if I had read this, you know, when I was in middle school, it would have changed my life. So again, questioning trans folks, cis folks that want to know more about being trans. Something else that she discusses that I really, really appreciated was in like the young adult section of her life, when she kind of talks about overcompensation towards the gender that you were assigned at birth. That's something that I definitely went through at a point in my life, and it's something that so many other trans people go through, but invalidate themselves because of it and because of those experiences. I, you know, I've seen dozens of trans people talk about how they didn't think they were trans because at one point they wore pink or, you know, when they were little, they didn't play with dolls or they didn't play with trucks. And that's just something that is so prevalent and it's such a prevalent misconception. So her being like raw and honest about how she at one point also overcompensated and forced herself into this cisnormative heteronormative role that she doesn't fit is just, from what I've seen, it is a very common experience among trans people to invalidate ourselves because of things that we've done in the past or liked in the past, or even like currently in our lives. And again, I just think it's a great lesson to learn that that doesn't, that's not true. Just because you presented yourself at one point as a super feminine girl doesn't mean you can't be a trans man. Gender expression and the way that we present ourselves is completely different than our identities. And not only does she explain that concept really well, but she goes into the nuance of how that can make us invalidate ourselves and make us question ourselves when in reality we know who we are and we just can't be honest with ourselves yet. Um, that was a discussion and kind of a thread through her story that I really appreciated. Something that she discusses for a bit that I thought was really cool and I haven't seen a lot of discussion about is her like mini celebration of trans selfies. It's on page 253. Selfies put us in control, letting us carefully pose and pick how we're seen. When a trans person is there as a selfie, they're saying they've found a way to appreciate how they look, and they're happy enough to make it public. It's a form of self-expression. Although I had grown up hating having my photo taken, I fell in love with selfies as my appearance continued to change into something that felt like my own. Sharing a regular photo became more than just a momentary celebration. It became a visual reminder that I had made personal progress. Oh boy, if that doesn't hit me hard, like I feel almost the exact same way about selfies. And I feel like a lot of people avoid kind of talking about it because when you talk about your own pictures of yourself, it feels a bit vain. But when you're trans, that can be really, really powerful. And self-expression is something that is almost revolutionary as a trans person. I just thought those few sentences were really cool and really hard hitting for me. And something that I feel like some trans people need to hear as like, an allowance, you know, you are allowed to express yourself. You are allowed to take pictures of yourself. You are allowed to post them and be proud of them and love who you are. That's okay, do it. I am here with you and for you. I also really appreciated her acknowledgement of how liberation means an end to the idea of passing and the importance of passing. I liked how she discussed um, how mandatory assimilationism is sometimes seen as a form of liberation, but in reality, it makes the lives of a lot of trans people a lot more difficult. I also liked her discussion of hormones because she says that neither testosterone nor estrogen are universally bad or good, that everybody has a little bit of both, or a lot of one and less of the other, or some mix of the two, right? And I like that she doesn't paint one as inherently bad. I've definitely seen some tweets by trans women that are like, testosterone is evil, testosterone ruined my body. And like me and a bunch of other trans masculine people are out here injecting ourselves with testosterone and like really loving the changes that it brings us. So it feels a little bit invalidating and like I totally understand where they are coming from, but it's just an interesting like divide that some of us see testosterone as like such a magical thing. And then a lot of trans women see it as evil. And I appreciated as a trans masculine person that she didn't paint it as evil, that she just said, it's not right for me, but it is right for some trans people. And we shouldn't be demonizing one hormone or the other just because it's not what fits for us. And that was the last thing that I wrote down. This is a bit of a shorter video compared to a lot of my trans book reviews, because when I don't like books, I tend to ramble forever. But yeah, this book is incredible. If you're someone who's questioning their gender, 
I would highly recommend that you read it. Don't let the title make you think that it's going to make you think that you're trans. This isn't going to try to brainwash you. It's just going to give you the perspective of somebody who has a lot of experience transitioning and talking to people and coming out and existing as a trans woman. If you're cis, it provides a lot of explanations for things that I get questions about all the time. It's very well done. It's well written. I didn't catch a single typo. You know, I've I've said in some other videos that some books have typos. <laughs> this one doesn't. So yeah, aside from the slight language difference between trans community and trans communities, this book is great. Um, I think it can spark a lot of important discussions. I think I could, you know, easily talk about this for four more hours with someone who else who's read the book. I really commend Mia Violet for being so publicly vulnerable about, you know, not only being trans, but her mental health, her sexuality, her life in general. Just this book is amazing and I hold it really close to my heart. And this is easily one of my favorite trans-related memoirs, life lesson books. I will link both her Twitter and her website down in the description because those are the main places that she can be found online. And if you want to buy this book, and support her, I'd recommend that you do so. It's great. Or if you know me in real life and you want to borrow my copy, text me. <laughs> Goodbye. I hope that you've read a really good and really affirming book recently, and if not, then may I suggest this, and I will talk to you later, maybe.